Hey guys, welcome again to another lesson. And we are continuing from yesterday's lesson where we looked at our photoelectric effect. Right? So today we'll be looking at the X-ray production. So basically we're looking at how our X-rays formed. Right? So X-rays are produced in X-ray tubes by colliding electrons to specific metals. Right? So as we see in this diagram, we have electrons which collides with an atom. We have the nucleus of the atom there. So it's going to actually collide with this electron here and it will cause that electron to exit the atom. Now we have a hole there that's left from the electron that was knocked off. So therefore, another electron from a higher energy level will actually drop to that hole to fill that gap, right? So it's in order to stabilize the atom. So because of this drop in energy level, then there is, a X, there is that excess energy that is released in the form of X-ray. So basically, that's the summary of how X-rays are formed using the x-ray tubes right so because of the change in energy drop between levels then we have delta e equals hf and again h represents Planck's constant and f there represents the frequency of the x-ray that is produced right now we look at the uses of x-rays now we can use x-rays for radiography and that is to find image of tissues in our body, the CAT scan. The CAT scan is similar to the radiography, it's just that the CAT scan actually covers the entire organ. So it gives you the structure of the entire organ and tissue that you're looking at. And finally, we have radiotherapy, right? And we look at the de Broglie's equation, right? So the de, Brog de Broglie's equation actually links X-ray production and the photoelectric effect. So the broadly stated that when electrons leave an atom, right, it leaves in the form of a wave. So his experiment or his equations are is based on proving that electrons leave as a wave. And based on that, he used the equation that lambda is equal to Planck's constant over momentum, right? And we know momentum would be mass times velocity. So this is actually the equation that De Broglie used to prove that the electrons that leave the atoms actually leave in the form of a wave. Because once it's a wave, then it will have a, a wavelet. Alright, so we're going to look at these questions to help us to understand X-ray production better. Alright, so question one says that determine the maximum frequency of an X-ray emission caused by electrons traveling at 6,000 EV. Right? So the first thing we know is that E is equal to HF. So therefore, if we make F the subject, we get E over H. Right? But the energy given was actually in electron volts, which we looked at in our last lesson. So to convert electron volts to Joule, we multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So we get 9.6 times 10 to the negative 15 Joule. Right? So now we can substitute the 9.6 times 10 to the negative 15 over Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And we get an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the 19 hertz. All right, let's look at question two. An electron is accelerated across a 500 volt potential. Find a minimum wavelength, X-ray, that can be produced. All right, so from this question, we know that we want to find the, the wavelength, but we know that E is equal to HF. So instead of the F, we can substitute F for C over lambda that we did last lesson. So we get E equal HC over lambda, right? Now we make lambda the subject, so we get HC over E equals lambda. And again, we get 500 volts, right? So from volts, it actually tells us that the amount of energy that's being supplied because it's one electron, right? So because it's one electron, then 
it's 500 eV. If it actually stated that it was like 2 electron, then the 500 would multiply by 2, which would be 1000 eV, then you multiply it by the 1.6 times into the negative 19. But in this case, the question says 1 electron. So it's just 500 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And we get the energy as 8 times 10 to the negative 17 joule. Alright, so now we can substitute times constant times the speed of light C over the energy in joule. And we get 2.49 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Right. Our last question, question 3. For the following energy level diagram for molybdenum, Determine the greatest frequency characterized X-ray possible, characteristic X-ray possible. Alright, so from the, the diagram, the energy diagram level, it shows you that in this case you have three energy levels, N1, N2, N3. Alright, so remember from the X-ray um, information that the electrons will knock one from the a lower energy level. So that means it either can knock an electron from N2 or N1. So we need to find the maximum frequency or the greatest frequency. So that means it has to have an energy jump that is the greatest, right? So if we look, if it drops from, let's say, from 3 to 2, then that is just the 2.5 drop, right? If it drops from 2 to 1, then that's a 17 drop. Well, if it drops from 3 to 1, then that is a 19.5 drop. So the greatest would be moving from 3 to an energy level of 1. Right? So we know that the delta E, the change in the energy, since N3 is 0 0.5 kilo EV and N1 is 20 kilo EV, 20 minus 0 0.5, you get 90.5 kilo EV. And again, because that's in EV, electron volts, then we change it over to a joule, so it's a 90.5 times 10 to the 3 for the kilo, times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and we get 3.12 times 10 to the negative 15 joule. So we know that delta E is equal to HF, so we need to find F, so it's delta E over H. So we put in delta E, which is a 3.12 times 10 to the negative 15, over H, which is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And we get an answer of 4.71 times 10 to the 18 hertz. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Hope you got something and understand about our X-ray production. See you next time.